Welcome to parallelogram. We're going to apply the properties of parallelogram. It is given quadrilateral A B C D is a parallelogram A B C D. All right, let's look at the first one. Angle D, the measure of angle D is sixty-four. What is the other angle measures? Let's look at this opposite angle. Angle D is opposite angle is angle B. By the property, opposite angles congruent. Therefore, B is also sixty-four. By the rule in a parallelogram, if it is parallelogram, the consecutive angles are supplementary. Therefore, angle C, measure of angle C, is one eighty. Minus sixty-four. Pause this video. See if you、uh, can calculate one eighty minus sixty-four. All right. What do you have? Do you have one hundred sixteen? Very good. Let's put down here. And so angle C is one sixteen. Now go back to the first rule. If it is parallelogram, opposite angles are. Congruent. Therefore, angle A is also 116. Okay. Before we continue to solve our second problem, let's review the properties really quickly. Angles, opposite angles congruent. If it is a parallelogram, then opposite angles congruent. Let's label it by using the same amount, the same color of curve to indicate congruent angles. If it is a、um, parallelogram, then these consecutive angles. See these、uh, consecutive angles; they are supplementary. How about the sides? If it's a parallelogram, then opposite sides congruent. All right. I think we can use it here. We're given A B C D is a parallelogram. So when you write down parallelogram, you can write this little symbol A B C D. That's your parallelogram symbol. Just like when you have a triangle, you have a triangle A B C, triangle D O G. You have a special symbol just for this beautiful figure. All right. Now we come here. We know you guys are congruent. You guys, you just one. You guys are congruent. Okay, I'm gonna erase this. Make it look good. Just one. Now, therefore, AB is nine. CD is also nine units. AD is eleven. BC is also eleven units. Very simple fix. Okay, we continue use this property. If it's a parallelogram, then opposite sides are congruent. Let's look at this one. This time, BC is X plus two, AD is four. Can we find the value of X by the property? We can set up like this. Therefore, X is two. Done. All right. By the property, we can set up like this. Y minus five is twelve. Y is plus twelve. Plus five each side. Y is seventeen. All right. Let us continue. One more property for if it is a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect each other. Therefore, we're gonna add our symbol. Let's get a different color. We're gonna say these two segments have equal length, and these two segments have equal length. Let me give um give you a. Point name we call it O. So let's see it one more time to make it really clear. If it's a parallelogram, then diagonals bisect each other, which means BO equals DO, which means AO equals CO. Therefore, we can set up BO equals DO. We set up as Two m minus one equals nine, or you can say, uh, two m minus one equals nine. You can say nine equals two m minus one. Either is fine, whichever you like. Some people like to keep the variable on the left hand side. Some people say either side is fine. I can solve that. Okay, all right. Go ahead and solve for n. Do you have a n is five? All right. So same concept. Same property. Next one, we're gonna set up AO equals CO. Therefore, we say 
m plus eight equals three m. Go ahead and solve for m. What do you have for m? Let's pause and wait. Do you have m is four? Very good. Now that's how we use how we apply the properties of parallelogram. Some about the angle, some about the size, and some about the diagonals. And don't forget one more important thing: if it is a parallelogram, then opposite sides are parallel. That's it. Happy learning.